What's up, everybody? Welcome to video two of three. Today is Tuesday, October 16th, 2018. As you know, there's going to be a three video series that's going to be dedicated on how to originate purchase business because I think this is vital if you're a mortgage loan officer going into 2019 and you want to ensure your success, you're going to need to know how to really understand the dynamics and the science of purchase loans. And today, we're going to talk about how to actually capture and sell the realtor because yesterday we covered how to properly capture, set up the expectation and really hone in on earning the loyalty and the trust from the prospect. So yesterday, uh, if you if you missed yesterday's video, I'll leave a link below the, the this video in the notes. So be sure you catch all three. Be sure you watch the entire episode and do me a favor, comment below. Let me know you watched it. Let me know if you like it or not. Let me know if you you know found a specific section by time stamping that part of the video and what your greatest takeaway was. You know, it really helps me out and and I read all the comments. I reply myself. I don't have a virtual assistant that replies to my comments so you know I really engage with the community but it helps everyone else that's also watching because I'm able to really study what those inquiries are what those comments are and then um, and then also feed on it and and actually build on that and dive a little bit deeper on those comments so be sure to engage inside this video but like I said, today's video is really going to be dedicated uh, around the topic of the realtor. And whether you're an outside loan officer or you're an inside loan officer, you know, I, I happen to represent the number one team on a national size, multi billion dollar direct lender, with one of the top direct mortgage bankers in the entire country. And so I'm fortunate and blessed to have to have this this insight and this experience on both sides, both the outside and also the inside. Plus, I, you know, as you could tell through all of the plethora of videos that I've collected thus far and how passionate I am on this video, this is my art, you know, There's, this is my science, this is something that I'm very passionate about. And, uh, you know, yesterday, again, we, we talked about how to capture the prospect and I gave you certain ways on how to word certain things so that you can stand out and make noise in a different way. And it's going to actually coincide with the message today because I believe that you need to sound different. You need to make noise in a different way when dealing with these realtors. It's important. Otherwise, you're just going to sound like noise and people tend to cancel out noise when it has nothing to do with them. And so in this video, we're going to talk about how to capture realtor business. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. And on this episode, we're going to talk about how to capture realtor business, realtor referrals, how to engage with the realtor, the proper way to actually earn the right to actually interview this realtor and more importantly what to say during the interview because I think it's pretty awkward and <laughs> if you don't know what to say um, but also if you if you consider the fact that if you go in sounding like most loan officers you have only a few minutes let alone a few seconds to really stand out make a difference and be memorable to that realtor and so my goal in this video is to give you those 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 gold nuggets that's going to make you stand out it's going to make you it's going to help you make noise in a different way and so as i'd mentioned whether you're an outside loan officer or you're an inside loan officer i think it's important that you identify you know how you're engaging with your realtors first and foremost because with the inside uh, loan officer, right? Like if you're working from a call center, you don't necessarily meet with your realtors in person. You're not out there scouting realtors and that's, that may not even be your primary method of generating leads. Typically within a call center, you're actually given the leads and that's the benefit of working in the call center. However, from a business standpoint, since there's such a large investment of, of generating the leads, typically an inside call center has better pricing than a retail office. The retail office Office I'm referring to are those outside loan officers and so if you're an inside loan officer inside loan agent you have to recognize what your leverage is because it's ultimately going to be the leverage that you talk about when dealing with realtors and more importantly it's going to also help coincide with the second piece of leverage which you actually work within the, the corporate office or within the department that handles the transaction. And so as like for example, a retail loan agent is outside so they can't necessarily walk over to the next you know cubicle or or the next department and and literally meet with the underwriter or talk to the processor. And and that's important because 
at the end of the day, the realtors, they're, they're, they're just like us, right? They're, they are straight commission employees. They're business, they're business owners, pretty much. They're entrepreneurs. So you have to think of it that way because you have to treat them that way. And when you think about entrepreneurs or you think about fully commissioned employees, one thing that's important to them is their business, right? It's their, it's their bit, that's their, that's their lifeline. And when you identify that that's their most important piece of the day, that's their, their whole why, that's their emotional why factor, you can then start to tailor your verbiage around that topic. And so for example, when inside loan agents talk to realtors, you know, we have to understand, even outside loan agents talk to realtors, we have to understand what piques realtors' interest, right? And, and for outside loan agents, I'm going to get to you as far as what, you know, how you could leverage your capabilities as well. But I want to take a step back and really identify how the realtor mind works. And as I had mentioned, the realtor mind works is all about certainty. Realtors, just like prospects, just like us, for example, we need certainty. And so, so a loan officer, just like we hold our loan processors accountable, or we get upset with loan processors or loan underwriters or guidelines or AUS answers, we also have to think that that is the same reaction that a realtor would have when they're dealing with loan agents or anyone involved within that transaction because with empathy, we'll realize that the realtor has invested a lot of time in marketing, has invested a lot of time in, in doing open houses and scouting and follow-up calls. And so when they get a transaction in escrow, it is very important because most realtors don't operate with with uh, with a base salary, some of them with a guarantee, but they got to make up that guarantee, right? They got to, they, in most cases, they got to pay that back. But sometimes it's a draw. And what we have to understand, engage with, is that sensitivity. Much like we do with our prospects or our leads, we're we're selling based on emotion, and the realtors are no different. But it's it the emotion is not just coming from the realtors. The emotion is actually coming from the loan officers ourselves because we knowing that we're almost equal counterparts, like loan officers and realtors, knowing that we're most almost equal counterparts, we on our side, the loan officer's side, may get sensitive a lot of the time when, when realtors act like dicks, right? Or realtors act like too good to be true, like they foo-foo and shit. So sometimes we take it to heart, like it's our fault, like it's their fault, like it's, like it's us that made them like that. But when we do take a step back, have empathy and realize that realtors are simply getting scouted like the hottest chick at the bar. Everyone's looking at them. Everyone's hitting on them. Everyone's giving them that, that, that horrible pickup line. And so they tend to get bothered by it. It's much like how we react to our manager, right? Like when our manager keeps sweating at points, like, oh, here we go again. Here goes this dude, <laughs> right? So we have that reaction, even though we love our manager, even though we love them, like, they, you know, this is our family or whatnot, but we just naturally respond this way. So we can't get mad at them. We actually have to expect it. And when we expect it, we can better adapt and move on from it. Where I think a lot of loan officers have trouble with meeting with realtors or gaining that type of relationship is because they take it too close to heart. They take it too personal. Also, besides that, they simply don't know what to say. They don't know how to initiate the engagement. It becomes awkward. And so what happens is most loan officers just tend to sound like every other loan officer and it just becomes noise. They get rejected enough times and the loan officer thinks it's them. But the problem though is that the underlying reason why is because they simply do not have the right guidance. You're probably getting led by someone who never did it before. You're probably watching the wrong videos on YouTube or you have no mentor on your side on how to properly do this. So let me tell you how top producers are crushing it in this game, man. And when you, when you take a step back further and you realize that realtors only really want one thing and that's certainty. And so the question is, well, how do I give a realtor certainty? Well, you have to identify the only real way to give realtor certainty is thorough, clear communication. That's it, man. We, 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 you know, like I shared yesterday, my company spends millions of dollars in understanding how to create an engine to generate purchase business, right? We're a multi-billion dollar company. We're, <laughs> this is our, we got nothing else to do, man. And so our whole focus is how do we become the top 
uh, purchase originator in the country, and we're damn near there, right? And so, so through these trials and tribulations, and through these management meetings, I get an insider peek at what's working, what's not working, and what I found, and what, and through my own personal experience, is that realtors just want follow through. They just want accountability. They're just like us. They want concise, direct, clear to the point communication and they want notifications, boo boo. You see, all realtors just want to know that it's taken care of. They may not want phone calls. They may not want long drawn out emails because that takes up a lot of the important, valuable time that a realtor has. And if you, again, are empathetic towards a realtor, you're going to realize that they spend a ton of time doing the scouting for open houses, doing the scouting for home sellers, so showing properties nonstop to their potential buyer clients. And you have to imagine they, they, they operate and they spend a lot of time with real, no real certainty that the person they're showing all these properties to are ever going to buy a home. They have no real certainty that when they do the open house and they, and they sacrifice sacrifice their weekends that they may not find a buyer. And so if you are different than what they normally go through on a day-to-day -day basis and you can include the certainty, right? The the notification, the clear communication, the vision, the the clear sight of what exactly is going on, well, guess what? You just stood out from the rest. You just made noise in a different way because all our competitors, all the other loan officers, you know how they sound? What they sound like is that they sound like, uh, hey man, who are you putting your business through? Hey man, put your business through me. Hey man, I'm the number one company in the world. Hey man, I got I got the best company in the entire universe, bro. Like, hey man, like it's it's all it is 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 those cheap pickup lines that, that the hottest chick at the bar is hearing all day. And what happens is, is they begin to mute you out so much so that when they hear you're a loan officer, they're already expecting you to hit on them. And so how, how do you come off in a different way? How do you, you know, how do I approach a realtor than D? Well, most, most of the time, if you're, if that's your question is because you're an outside loan agent. And just like I said, I'm going to take care of my outside loan agents. Inside loan agents, I mean, they're, they're primarily focused on the consumer, right? But it's important that you stick around, you watch tomorrow's video, because I'm going to tell you what to do with those, with those transactions. And it's important that you foster that because that's going to create a lifeline in 2019. Your income is going to explode. And my outside loan agents, if you aren't doing this one thing, you know, you're definitely going to want to watch tomorrow's video also because this one piece matters. It matters so much. And if you want to 10x your income, you want to 3x your income, 2x income, wherever your goal is, boo boo, however much time you got on your hands, you, you can accomplish that in 2019, but you got to watch tomorrow's video all the way through. So to my outside loan agents, you know, primarily what your day consists of is finding realtors, right? Because the problem is that you don't necessarily have the leads like an inside loan agent does. So you don't got people calling you all day like, hey, let me do this loan. This is your past clients. And sometimes, you know, some of the outside loan agents, you just simply don't like refinances. I get it. So be sure you send them to me. Hit me up at Daniel at salesremaster.com. I got you boo boo <laughs> any of those refinance feel, feel free to send them over to me but anyway on the outside loan agents your your day really really just basically encumbers just meeting and fostering and, and recruiting realtors right and and however you get around to it you know however you market their attention to bring them to you you know that's that's uh, you know it's going to be all different based on what brokerage and what resources you have but if you need some ideas again be sure to watch tomorrow's video but what do you do when you actually meet with them because a lot of your outside loan agents are, are going to meet with them at a the, uh, you know like a coffee shop shop or you're going to meet with them at lunch or you're going to go to the broker's office and maybe meet with them in their own setting or they'll probably come to your office and meet with you for a little bit but ultimately you typically have anywhere from five to 30 minutes to really make a good impression right so how do you make a good impression and what i found is that a lot of loan agents they just simply don't know what to ask and so they're sometimes freestyling or they're going based off of recommendations that other loan agents gave them who may be doing well but they don't actually elaborate well in this episode i'm actually elaborating and what those those engaging questions are and it typically comes down to a few important questions that you really have to craft one of the questions is you know uh if let's say if that if you were the loan agent right and you know of course my name's daniel and he's like hey man let me ask you something where are you crushing it right now like where are you finding the absolute most success 
And it's important that when you ask these questions, you actually have to engage with them. Don't think about your next question. You know, write down your questions, be professional, and really look at them. Like, watch them, engage with them, be coherent, be present. Because there's no, there's no benefit in actually just hearing them talk and then you're too worried about thinking about the next question. That's the whole reason why a lot of loan officers fail to actually communicate or convert leads is because they're too busy in their head thinking about objections that never even really happened yet. But anyway, when you ask these questions, it's important that you are engaged and you're really listening to it because the answers that they're going to give you to these questions are going to help you close that realtor. And so again, the question is, hey man, let me ask you, where are you crushing it right now? Like where are you finding the most success right now? And they're going to answer you, right? And then another question that's very important, you need to add this to your arsenal if you're not asking them already, is where where is your biggest pain right now? Like where are you having the most pain? Where, where, where are you you know, finding the pitfalls right now? Like, like what's your most troublesome scenarios right now? And then they're going to answer you, right? Sometimes the realtors, just like us, where we're busy in our heads thinking about, you know, what we're going to say next. Sometimes the realtors blank us out too. So sometimes they need, they need, you need to, you know, provoke the answer. So be prepared to elaborate and make it clear so that they understand what you're looking for. But ultimately what you're looking for is their trouble points, their pain points. Where are they, where are they having issues on? And typically what they're going to say is like, oh, the lender falls through or the clients change lenders, you know, uh, halfway through escrow and then now there's no certainty or they bring in a, a shady loan officer. I don't know them. And sometimes they they never answer the phone. They never give me the right communication. They don't give me the certainty. You're going to hear that thing, right? And, uh, and, and so just pay attention to that. But um, another question is also is what are the three things that are absolute musts in your business and personal relationships? Basically, what are the three absolute absolute must that you that must be there in order to foster a strong business and personal relationship in their opinion and what you're going to find is that a lot of these realtors their answers are going to be based on communication it's going to be based on honesty which is communication it's going to be based on you know follow up and 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 notifications like just let me know what's going on be accountable and help me communicate and put out the fires when needed a lot of it's going to have to do with communication so so again what are the three absolute must traits that a strong business relationship or personal relationship must have. And you're going to add business or personal because you want to know like what their real thought is because a lot of realtors, their business is their personal life. That's just how they operate. Again, entrepreneurs work all day long and you have to think a realtor is just like an entrepreneur, or at least the good ones that you want to meet, right? And then another important question is how many, how many uh, families do you want to help this year? You know, going into 2019, how many fam, what's your goal on how many families do you want to help next year? And ultimately what you're asking is how many, what's their goal? What's their setting, right? And this is an important answer because it's going to gauge where they're at mentally. If they're aiming high, right? If they even have a goal and it's going to help you kind of classify them, right? Like we got, we got leads in call, in call centers or we got leads as loan officers, like hot, warm, and cold. And so if you're dealing with a realtor, like, you know, I never thought about it. And you know, I want to help at least four, four for the year, boo boo. So you just want to sell one each quarter, then you know how to kind of treat them, right? But you don't want to change their goal. You don't want to say, oh man, that's it, man, go for this many, because that's just going to waste some time that you, you know, the little small window that you have. So don't change it. Just jot it down, know how to kind of store that particular contact. That may not be somebody that you want to hound every day because Boo Boo's only looking for one a quarter. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. But maybe keep them keep them updated on an email campaign. Maybe put them inside of an email group and, and keep them updated with certain programs. And if they decide to step up their game, then they deserve your time. But if you come across a realtor and be like, man, I need to close at least five a month, then that's somebody you're definitely going to want to take some time with. And that's somebody that you're going to need to follow up with and make sure that you spend time in, in, in generating that relationship. Now, besides that and finding out what their goals are, Another question is that you want to absolutely want to help is uh, or ask them is, um, you know, if there is anything that you can change about the mortgage loan process of, of, of how the purchase process comes and the mortgage, you know, delegates their, their duties or, or how the mortgage origination, uh, purchase origination process goes. If there's one or three things that you could change about that process, what would it be? 
And ultimately, the way they're going to answer it is that is they're going to tell you everything that they don't like about their, their current preferred lender, their current experience with their current lender. And it's important to understand that because, again, each of these answers on each of those questions becomes your leverage to then close the prospect, right? Because ultimately, how you, how you bridge into the close is say, okay, well, based on this information, man, I think we're an awesome fit. As a matter of fact, I want to prove it to you. I, don't, I definitely don't want to ask you for business. I believe that I need to earn your relationship. So I appreciate you taking the time and meeting with me today. I wanted to make sure we're a good fit and I've confirmed that we are. So let me earn it. And, uh, and the only way that I've been able to earn it through all my past uh, relationships with my realtors that I currently work with right now is I deliver for them. So I know that communication is important to you. I know that you want to have notifications and, and that's exactly what I specialize in. I work inside or I work outside and I have a strong relationship. I have an entire team that keeps my realtor relationships on the same exact page. More importantly, I also take the initiative to follow up and ensure that you are aware that my team knows what is happening and, and, and that we're all over whatever issue is happening right now on your file. And I want you to know that that because of everything that you've explained and outlined to me right now, I know that we could deliver, we could give you that resource. But again, let me earn it. So the, how, how I've been able to earn it through my past relationships is I want to show you how, how I could put all this together. I want to show you the experience in working with me. And if you like the experience, then let's go ahead and do more business and let's go and create this relationship. So let's start this way. The next two lending or finance opportunities that you come across, send them over to me and I'll show you how it works. Fair enough? And then you move in for the close, right? Because, because ultimately, just like a prospect, when you pitch a prospect, you're enunciating their goals. You're kind of framing their mind of exactly what they want. Well, in those questions, in those set questions, if you've been listening and taking notes, you already know exactly what they want, right? Like you're enunciating and you've shown that you've heard them. But more importantly, now they, they don't have any other reason to say no because you've just identified and isolated the focus and how you can help them and, and what exactly they want and they need, right? Now, here's the thing though, is that just because you had a successful meeting doesn't mean you have a realtor yet. It's important to do a follow-up. So if in the course of the week, you have two Two, you know, realtor meetings every single day. Friday, the at the end of the week, needs to be your follow up, and the bridge to do the follow up is like, hey man, I know you're gonna have a busy weekend. You probably got some open houses, so I wanted to catch you before you got too busy. Hey, you know, we we met on Monday, we met on Tuesday, and I want to thank you again. But more importantly, here's a link to some information that I shared with you. Here's some reviews that I shared with you. Reviews are an absolute must. You know, when you close a transaction with a realtor, there are a few people that you any purchase transaction for that matter. There's a couple people that you really need to start planting seeds to foster relationship with and ask for reviews if you can, but don't be, you know, don't be bugaboo, don't be a stalker, but more importantly, you want to, you want to ensure you are building your Rolodex and those people are the buyer agent, which typically, you know, could be the person you're working with or the seller agent and then their brokers, the people who actually own their brokerage. You just want to create some sort of template say, Hey, thank you. I worked with John Smith and you know, he, uh, he, he was really delighted. So I want to thank you very much for hiring a professional professional, keeping the absolute best in your, you know, in your brokerage. And I want to salute you and, and, and I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to work with them. And that just, you know, puts you in a good light but also the um, escrow agents, you know, you want to send them kudos as well. You're marketing every single day you're marketing and you're creating these relationships because you don't know which relationship is going to become a fountain of business. But when you engage with them again in the future, you can cross reference and then you can ask them for reviews because when you get reviews from realtors or escrow agents or brokers that say, Hey man, Daniel did an awesome job. He was always notifying us, kept us super clear and closed on time he over delivered that becomes social proof and then that becomes your 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 pinpoints that you could share in the meetings with your realtors like don't listen to me listen to what your competitors say boo boo if i could do it for them why can't i do it for you and that is how you generate the interest in a realtor now for inside loan agents man you know you have to do the same exact thing you know you have to you have to really capture the attention from your prospects but if you have an opportunity where you're actually out in farming and originating real 
realtor relationships and you could do it from a call center you know don't limit yourself but it's all going to start with how many transactions you get because you have an opportunity to, to deal with the prospect and you have an opportunity to capture their reviews and you want them to give a reviews like yeah we had a fast closing there was no headaches it, he over delivered communication was crystal clear and more importantly you want to reach out to the realtor because I'm sure that's what you're doing inside even inside loan agents you're introducing yourself to the realtor understand that you need to act as if that that person is going to give you the most business in the world because if you act that way your tonality changes your demeanor changes but more importantly you have right to then ask for a review from that realtor and guess what that becomes your ticket to earn business with other realtors because you are the inside loan agent you do get the better pricing you do sit next to the underwriting department you can get everything expedited you are held accountable and you did give them notifications because you understood that communication is key in dealing with these realtors so i hope that you found this video helpful i know we're about 26 minutes in but there are a lot of gold nuggets sprinkled throughout this video so if it brought you value please like share this video with someone else who's out there in the purchase game trying to kill it this is going to be your way to be prosperous in 2019 i appreciate your time and i'll see you on the next video tomorrow we're going to cover what you do with uh, social media the technology how do you actually build lead magnets and so tomorrow is going to be how to properly market using the technology and the resources that you have in front of you today and i'll see you there bye let me show you everything i know Jungles like